I'm Catherine from Daybird Aviaries. Today I'm going to show you how to use a fence tool to make a cage or exhibit for one of our exotic animals. Look, do you see the baby goats? Here in this area where the goats are, the swing is, we're building a new enclosure for an animal that's not a goat. We have the fence post all in. It's a small area, it's 17 by 32. It's not huge, but it's using a part of the yard that up to now has not been used for anything. And it's going to greatly improve the quality of life of some of our animals here. Make our lives so much easier. We're going to wrap this enclosure in welded wire fencing, but we're going to do it in two stages. The top of it is going to be the two inch by four inch standard no climb welded wire. It's commonly what we refer to as dog wire around here. People use it to make their dog cages with. The bottom two feet is going to be a one inch by two inch welded wire mesh that we I use to make rabbit cages and bird cages with. I'm going to use it as fencing for this little paddock area. Every time I've ever bought one of these fence posts, I've been given some of these clips. Even way back when I was about 12 years old, my dad bought some fence posts and some chicken wire to build a chicken run for me, and he was given some of these, and we could not figure out how to do it. I had no idea how you were supposed to use that thing. I know. I thought that you were supposed to take it and latch it around like that and somehow do all kinds of weirdness with it. Thus, only recently, only recently in like the last few years have we learned how to use these properly. And so starting with this weird long hook, you start with the little small hook and you put it there and it just snaps around the fence post. And then you can use a screwdriver oh, or a pair awesome. of needle nose but pliers. But we found this special Please tool here. Yeah, it's, it's so easy a kid can do it. I know it's so easy a little girl can do it. I know that you hear me something, but it's actually very easy. Once you get the hang of it. Now you can use a screwdriver to do that, and I have done that in the past. And then I would come back over here with a pair of pliers and close that. And this has a hole drilled in it, especially for this purpose, to wrap that little tail piece around. Just like that. It's amazing. Let me show you exactly how easy this is. Now, this little tool, let me see. The little tool was not real cheap. I did buy it at Tractor Supply. It was $12. Um, not cheap at all. But down in the comments, if I can find a link for Amazon, I'll leave it down in the comments. It may be more expensive, it may be cheaper, I don't know. But I think it's gonna make things a little bit easier, simpler, just because you only I'm only gonna to have to carry one tool around with me instead of fumbling with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers to do this. I've got these Nikon poops that we're having to put fences up for. Hey, and also... This is not their enclosure, however. There's somebody else that's going to live in this enclosure. Now, Catherine's going to show you... Exactly how easy it is. ...from start to finish. She's working from the wrong side of the fence, though. Yeah, this is but exactly But I think how she's going to be able to do it. Now, you said I'm not going to be able to until I showed you. He, he said that... I promise you're not going to be able to do it. I didn't say promise. I said you might not be able to. No, you promised. Because it's not the simplest, easiest of things to do. Take a little tink. 
Instagram, man. Then. That's hinged so that you can wrap that around. Yeah. I put it on the tickle pie when it's just kind of a tickle pie. Look at that. Now Look that. how simple that is. Let's stick, see if she can do this from the other this. side. Stick it on this. Push, 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 push. Now that's not just part about doing it. Then you pull to Look at that. You. Look how simple then she made that look. you are done. You can add a little more to this. Well, that's secure. I doubt even a cockatoo could take that loose. I grew up in a town called Moody. Dad, it's only going to be more corn me. That's not true. You're a ham. You're a movie star. Even with your belly showing. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's an outfit. Are those your mom's pants? No, they're mine. They are now? Nope, they're actually mine. The and none of these creatures are the inhabitants for which this enclosure was built and it's not finished yet there's still work to be done but we're letting some of the rabbits and the two baby goats and over there that's Scott the peacock we have three peafowl here on our farm we have Scott the peacock who is a, a black shoulder we have Pavel that's the normal Indian blue and then our only female is Snowflake, and she's the white leucistic female. This is Fred Bunny. At one time, he lived with the silky chickens loose on the floor of a barn, and he thought that, well, he thought the chickens were girl bunnies, and so he can't live with the chickens anymore. Let's see what he does to Scott. Nothing. Good. And over there, let's see if I can zoom in. That girl, well, her name is Big Brown Bunny. Okay, real original. Y'all know that the kids name all the animals here. And she's just a big mixed breed. She's never bred for us. And so we're putting her out here with Fred just to see what might happen. They've already mated once. When we tried cage breeding them, she wouldn't have anything to do with them. She was quite mean. Even when we put them into a cage that neither of them had ever occupied before. But out here, she seems to be okay. Now look, this is what we've done for the corner brace. Sort of. To hold this fence up. Because of the resident of this enclosure, I couldn't use any wooden structure at all. So we sunk a teepas deep into the, into the ground. And I've used a ratchet strap coming up to pull it tight. And back here, I've done the same thing to that far corner, tied it to the tree. And so it has worked extremely well. This piece, this roll of wire is for something else. We planted a fig tree here and it's gonna get make a big great big bush. And so that hopefully will keep kids from tripping over that. That's why I have this here currently because this is the way that the kids go to the blueberries over there. And so this keeps them from tripping over that. But this is called a dead man. When you put a post in the ground behind the fence on the outside of the fence. And you tie it off to the corner post. Normally you would use, you know, that, that fencing wire that you use for braces. But this is what we've done. We've overlapped the wire. We had to cut it to get it stretched properly. But 
We've got it all clipped nice and tight. The top edge of the wire I let come over the top of the T-post and that holds it up. You notice that we put the one inch by two inch wire along the bottom and that's for a very special specific purpose is to keep small creatures in. Now we use this, the rabbits get to use this from time to time and the little Nigerian dwarf goats get to use it but the main occupant is Scooter, our Patagonian Casey. Now if there were any wood involved in the building of this he would chew it and so this is all metal and he's coming he sees me coming looking for a treat he wants some sweet potato or carrot or celery he's really liking celery right now but that small mesh at the bottom it just helps to further protect him keep him safe and you can see that we've clipped it all together and there's Big Brown Bunny there. Are these holes that are in the ground? We're here already. Those are chipmunk holes. Um, and I'm okay with those being here. That helps with drainage. The, uh, the drainage ditch is just on the other side of that fence. And you can see the big goats out in the, the little front pasture there. A parsley she's not not allowing the kids to nurse but she's not keeping them away either so they are out there with her learning how to be a goat but they're still being bottle fed <laughs>